He was tall, athletic, and drop-dead gorgeous. He shined in every sport, but he shined the brightest in football, even signing a $40 million NFL contract. But was this tall, handsome football player actually a serial killer? Let's find out right now. Wednesday, my Cajun cuties. Yes, it's me, Anne Marie, aka the Cajun Crime Queen from Karen Girl, Louisiana. Cajun born, Cajun bred, and when I die, I'll be Cajun dead. I hope after this video that you like, subscribe, and comment, and don't forget to press on that notification bell so you never miss a video from me, Anne Marie. I hope you have a beverage. I hope you have a snuggle partner or a snuggle fur partner. Those are the best, and you're ready to hear a true crime story with yours truly. And as always, I want to know, are y'all drinking that water? Are y'all staying hydrated? Are y'all getting those tickers up? Remember, just a quick 20, 30 minute walk, especially first thing in the morning, get those endorphins up and you are going to have an amazing, wonderful day. I promise you. And I want to thank all of you for joining me tonight on Wicked Wednesday. And I want to tell y'all that last week we had a terrible hurricane, Hurricane Francine down here in Louisiana. And my heart goes out to all of the hurricane victims. We had so much rain, lost electricity. And I just wanna tell y'all that uh, my thoughts and prayers are with all of you who are still recovering from the hurricane. And as always, I wanna tell y'all that this story that I'm covering tonight is crazy and it is going to be not a one part video but a two part video because this video is huge and i have been looking forward to delivering this video to y'all for months and tonight i'm bringing y'all part one of this video yes tonight we are going to be covering nfl football player aaron joseph hernandez and as we all know, the FX series on Aaron Hernandez's life premiered last night, and I can't wait for all of you to see it so we can all discuss the series together. And I want all of y'all thoughts on the series. Aaron Joseph Hernandez was born on November 6, 1989 in Bristol, Connecticut to his parents, Terry and Dennis Hernandez. Terry and Dennis had two children, Aaron and Aaron's older brother, Dennis Jonathan Hernandez Jr., a.k.a. DJ. Dennis and Terry were married in 1986, divorced in 1991, but remarried in 1996, filed bankruptcy in 1999. It was said that Dennis and Ter Terry had a very violent relationship. They were constantly fighting. It was also said that if Dennis Hernandez had a bad day, when he got home, the whole house knew he had a bad day. He would take it out on everyone. It was said on one occasion that Dennis Hernandez beat Terry, Terry so much until she lost consciousness. But Terry wasn't the only one Dennis Hernandez hit. It was said that Dennis physically abused both of his sons Aaron and DJ. And not only was Aaron Hernandez physically abused as a child, it was also said that Aaron was essayed as a young child, as young as six. Aaron Hernandez adored and loved his family and especially his father. He idolized his father, Dennis Hernandez. It was also said that when Aaron, when Aaron was very young, that he wanted to be a cheerleader, but his dad put a stop to that right away and said, no, you are going to play sports and soar in every single sport that you play. Dennis Hernandez was an amazing athlete all throughout the years. He was great in every single sports. He wanted his sons to be great in sports as well. He wanted them to be great athletes. He wanted them, them to excel in football, track, and basketball. It was said that Dennis Hernandez would often beat his boys if he felt they weren't doing well. Dennis Jr. and Aaron often feared their father, but idolized him at the same time. 
Dennis Hernandez was all about Yukon. Yukon, 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 Yukon. Y'all, even the dog was named Yukon. Aaron was so good at football that when he was only 14 years old, yes, 14 years old, Yukon offered him a scholarship. Aaron was also especially great in track and basketball. Y'all, Aaron soared at every single sport. He was an amazing athlete and he was following in his father's footsteps. Not only was Aaron a good athlete, but so was his older brother, DJ. And it was said by Aaron's best friend in middle school and high school, Dennis Sansusi, that he and Aaron were in a relationship together, if you know what I mean. He said that he and Aaron participated in uh, sexual activities after school. It started in middle school and went throughout high school. Aaron and his best friend Dennis did not want anyone to know about what was going on between them. They wanted no one to find out they were having this type of relationship, especially Aaron's father, Dennis. Dennis had all of this authority. He was even called the king. He was from Puerto Rico. He was tall. He was gorgeous. He had, he just, you felt a presence. Even whenever you see him and you look at him, you know he is this big, strong, strapping man. And Aaron did not want Dennis to find out he was participating in these types of activities with another male. And I'm going to pause right there and say how th that's just a shame. It's a shame that a person can't be themselves, that Aaron wanted to be in this relationship, but he couldn't express himself in the way he wanted to. And I say, love who you want to love, be who you want to be. And if you want to be in a relationship with someone, don't worry about what anybody else thinks, be you and be yourself. Sadly, when Aaron Hernandez was only 16 years old, his father, Dennis Hernandez, passed away during hernia surgery. Aaron was very saddened by the loss of his father. He took it very hard and was very saddened about the death of his father. Aaron was only 16 years old at the time. And as we all know, that is a very tender age for any child but especially Aaron as he idolized his father and loved his father very much. Around this time, Aaron Hernandez began to act out, especially towards authority figures, especially towards adults. He was very upset and troubled all the time, his mother said. He was constantly disrespectful and it said he never got over the death of his father. Aaron Hernandez and his older cousin, Tanya Singleton, were extremely close. After the death of his father, Dennis Hernandez, Aaron spent a lot of time at his cousin Tanya's home. While Aaron was grieving the loss of his father, Tanya Singleton's husband, Jeff Cummings, and Aaron's mother, Terry, began having an affair. When the affair was made public, Tanya and Jeff Cummings divorced, and Jeff moved in to Terry's home. This enraged Aaron. He had just lost his father. He didn't want a whole nother dude living in his house and his cousin's husband. That's a little weird, don't y'all think? He just lost his dad and you got some dude in the house already? So this enraged Aaron. Aaron pretty much moved into Tanya Singleton's home. And around this time, this is where he began being involved in criminal activity. Aaron Hernandez attended Bristol Central High and was extremely popular, especially with the ladies. At this time, Aaron Hernandez began dating his gorgeous girlfriend, Shayana Jenkins, who he, who he had been knowing since elementary school. She was a beautiful girl with stunning looks and beautiful green eyes. She said her and Aaron would pass notes to each other, talk on the phone, hold hands, hang out, go to birthday parties together, and they begin having their relationship while in high school. Aaron and Shayana fell in love very fast and wanted a future together. 
Aaron loved playing football. And it was also said that Aaron also loved to smoke marijuana and that he smoked marijuana every single day. It was also said that Aaron Hernandez loved drinking alcohol and would drink several times a week. Aaron's social life was filled with alcohol and smoking marijuana at a very young age. But all Aaron Hernandez wanted to do was play football. He loved the sport more than anything. He wanted to play in college. He wanted to play for the NFL. And Aaron Hernandez knew he had a future in football. But was Aaron going to take the right path while playing football? And was Aaron still not over the death of his father? Was Aaron facing demons at this time? Why was Aaron starting to act out at such a young age after the death of his father? It was said that Aaron truly never dealt with the death of his father. But all Aaron wanted to do was to be the best he could be at football. Although Aaron Hernandez committed to play at UConn with his older brother, DJ, he decided to play for an amazing team with an amazing coach. Yes, Aaron Hernandez decided that he was going to play football at the University of Florida with a great coach named Urban Meyer. Aaron was so good at football, he received a full scholarship to the University of Florida. Urban Meyer flew down to Connecticut, and it was said that he convinced Aaron Hernandez's principal to allow him to graduate a semester early. When Aaron was only 17 years old, he became a Florida Gator and moved to Florida. Aaron was ready physically for football, but was extremely immature and dealing with several demons. Aaron was dealing with his sexuality, he was dealing with the death of his father, and he was growing extremely dependent on marijuana. It was said that Aaron Hernandez smoked marijuana every day and loved it. Aaron had a girlfriend in Florida. Aaron and Shayana broke up while in high school, and when Aaron attended the University of Florida, he started dating a beautiful woman named Alyssa. And she says that Aaron had the potential to play for the NFL. He was a wonderful football player, she said, and he was. He was great. He was a star football player at such a young age, only 17 years old. She said that she found text messages in Aaron's phone between he and another male, and she questioned it. Aaron denied everything, but Alyssa states that she believes at the time there was some type of relationship between her and this other man. She said that she loved Aaron dearly, but she did not want to be an NFL wife. She said Aaron would look in the mirror sometimes and say, I'm a beast. And she said, Aaron, you are. You are an incredible football player. And that, th that is the way your career is going. But even though Aaron was a star football player, he played his freshman year. And it was said that he was benched because he failed a drug test. A Aaron Hernandez knew that he was going to be a star football player but it was said that he could not stop smoking marijuana and he had to, he was going to have to stop smoking or he would not be able to play football. Aaron Hernandez was only in Florida about four months when he went to a bar called The Swamp. He ordered several drinks at The Swamp and when the bar manager asked him to pay his bill, he didn't want to. Aaron Hernandez went to leave and the bar manager shook the bill in his face and was like, hey, you need to pay your bill. You need to pay your bill. And as soon as the bar manager turned around, Aaron Hernandez sucker punched him, bursting his eardrum. It was said that Aaron felt very entitled, like I'm a Florida Gator. Why should I have to pay my bill? Who do you think you're talking to? I'm Aaron Hernandez, but it doesn't matter. When you have a bill, you have to pay it. But Aaron didn't want to pay the bill. So what does he do? He doesn't just leave and not pay it. He punches someone 
because he doesn't want to pay it. And that is going to show me, in my opinion, that Aaron has some type of rage inside of him. No one gets that upset when someone asks you to pay your bill. No one acts that way. Normal people don't act that way. But Aaron was enraged. It was said no charges were filed, but Aaron Hernandez was now on a path of destruction. In 2009, as a junior, Aaron Hernandez won the John McKay Award as the nation's best tight end. Aaron said that he was high on drugs every time he took the field. It was said Urban Meyer wanted to remove Aaron from the team for his drug use, but relented. It was said after Aaron's junior year, Urban Meyer told him that he would not be welcomed back for a fourth year and that he would have to try to enter the 2010 NFL Draft, which he did. NFL analysts stated that off-the-field concerns were a problem. Everyone assumed Aaron would be drafted in the first round, and if not the first, definitely the second round. But Aaron Hernandez was selected by the New England Patriots in the fourth round. Despite him being considered a top tight end, multiple teams reportedly chose not to draft him because he was a problem. Aaron received the lowest possible score in social maturity in a pre-draft report. And I always thought, no matter what, as long as you are a great football player, that's all that mattered. But... That isn't the case. The NFL wants to make sure that their players are a good person for themselves and their team. On June 8, 2010, the Patriots signed Aaron Hernandez to a four-year, $2.37 million contract that included a $200,000 signing bonus. Aaron started the 2010 season as the youngest player on any active roster in the NFL. He was only 20 years old. While Aaron Hernandez was living with Tanya Singleton, his cousin, he met Ernest Wallace and Carlos Charlie Boy Ortiz. The three were extremely close. And even though Aaron was living in Boston playing for the New England Patriots, he would often make the two hour drive home to Bristol, Connecticut to hang out with his friends. It was said that Aaron Hernandez was extremely addicted to smoking marijuana and would often drive to Connecticut to smoke with his friends. And Aaron's two friends, Ernest Wallace and Carlos Ortiz, both had criminal records. It was said that Aaron loved spending time with his friends and did not like to spend time with his teammates. It was said that Aaron's teammates for the New England Patriots tried to get Aaron to stay in town, tried to get Aaron to hang out with them but Aaron wanted to make the drive home and wanted to be with his friends. But why is that? Why didn't Aaron Hernandez want to spend time with his teammate, teammates? Don't you think he would want to get to know them? Don't you think he would want to know how their lives are, meet their family? But Aaron felt more in sync with people in his hometown. He didn't want to become friends with his team players. He wanted to be teammates, but he didn't want to know them outside of the field. But why is that? And I'm going to tell y'all right now, in my opinion, I feel more in sync with people that I know. But I do have friends that can be friends with everybody. They, they can meet somebody one day and they can be their friends for life, but not me. I have a routine. And it is hard for me to make new friends. I like to stay in my little area, my little circle, because as I've told y'all in the past, I'm extremely shy. I'm okay talking to y'all in front of the camera because I'm alone right now in a room. But if you send me out to make new friends, I will become like a little hermit in a shell. I will go in a corner and just sit there and I will be very quiet. So maybe that's how Aaron felt. Maybe Aaron felt that he could not make friends or he could not be with those types of people. But regardless, Aaron loved spending time with his friends and family in Bristol, Connecticut. In February of 2011, 
It was said that Aaron Hernandez had undergone hip surgery, but nothing was going to stop him from playing football. Aaron Hernandez was an incredible football player, and he scored several touchdowns for the New England Patriots. He was a star tight end and loved playing football and loved being a star. But in 2012, Aaron received the best news of his life, even better than football. Yes, Aaron Hernandez was going to be a father and he was over the moon happy. Shayana Jenkins said he would go around telling everyone he just couldn't keep it to himself. He loved the fact that he was going to be a father and he couldn't wait to be the father to his sweet little girl. All he talked about was how he was going to have a daughter. And on July 16th, 2012, Aaron Hernandez and his best friend, Alexander Bradley, decided to go to Cure Lounge just to have fun, party, have a couple of drinks at the club. While there, Alexander Bradley said someone spilt a drink on Aaron and he became enraged. He was furious that someone would disrespect him and spill a drink on him. And again, it's just a drink. Someone just accidentally spilled a drink on you. It's not that serious. But just like at the Swamp Lounge when the bar manager want him, wanted him to play, pay his bill in Florida, he sucker punched him, burst in his eardrum. Aaron did not like anyone disrespecting him. And he felt that when someone spilled a drink on him at Cure Lounge, that, that was disrespectful. And Alexander Bradley stated that at that time, Aaron Hernandez was furious and wanted revenge. Alexander Bradley said he kept telling Aaron to let it go. It's just a drink. It's not that big of a deal. But Aaron did not want to let it go and wanted something to happen right then and there. But they walked out of the club and Alexander Bradley said, even while out of the club, Aaron Hernandez kept discussing the situation and was still very upset that a drink was spilled on him. But why was he so upset and enraged over a drink? It's just a drink. But Aaron would get revenge according to Alexander Bradley. Alexander Bradley, who was with Aaron Hernandez that night, stated that Aaron Hernandez waited for the men to get out of the club. It was said that Aaron was in his silver SUV when Alexander Bradley and Aaron Hernandez pulled up on the side of the BMW that the men were in. Alexander Bradley claims that Aaron Hernandez pulls up on the side of them, starts yelling at the men, then puts his hand on Alexander Bradley's chest, tells him to lean back. And that is when Alexander Bradley says that he leaned his seat back. Aaron went over him stuck his arm out the window and fired five shots into the vehicle, instantly killing 29-year-old Daniel De La Bru and 28-year-old Safira Furtado, both from Cape Verde. They were both here living the American dream. Both men were killed instantly. Police had no idea who killed these two men. Police knew that Aaron Hernandez was there that night, but just said it was a coincidence that he happened to be at the club the same night someone was murdered. Police were at square one and didn't know where this silver SUV was, but everyone said that there was a silver SUV involved in this shooting. But where was the silver SUV and who was it for? The police had no idea who had just murdered two people. And there is no way the police could have known that it could have been Aaron Hernandez. But was Aaron's best friend, Alexander Bradley, telling the truth? Could Aaron Hernandez actually murdered two people 
just for spilling a drink? Could that actually happen? According to Alexander Bradley, it could happen. But why? Why would Aaron Hernandez be so enraged that because a drink was spilled on him, that he would have to brutally murder two people? Why? Several people didn't believe Alexander Bradley. Just six weeks after the murder, on August 27, 2012, Aaron Hernandez signed a $40 million contract with a $12.5 million signing bonus, which was the largest signing bonus ever received by an NFL tight end. Aaron gave $50,000 of that bonus to a charity named for the late wife of the Patriots owner. So if Aaron murdered Daniel De La Brew and Tafira Furtado in July of 2012, he went on to sign a $40 million contract and play a full season of football for the New England Patriots with no worries. But did Aaron Hernandez actually murder two people in cold blood? In the fall of 2012, Aaron Hernandez proposes to his beautiful longtime girlfriend, Shayana Jenkins. They are both extremely excited and very happy to plan their future and the future with them as a family. In October of 2012, Aaron and Shayana purchased a beautiful 7,000 square foot mansion near Boston. The house is absolutely stunning. Shayana fell in love with the house when she saw it. They are ready to become a family. And on Aaron's 23rd birthday, on November 6, 2012, Aaron Hernandez and Shayana Jenkins welcome their baby girl, AVL Hernandez. Aaron is so excited that his sweet baby girl is delivered on his birthday. Aaron cannot keep it to himself. He is overjoyed that his sweet little girl has arrived. They're taking pictures, they're doing Christmas cards, they're showing the family. Everyone is excited about little AVL Hernandez. And Aaron is now a proud father of a sweet little girl. Aaron Hernandez feels that his family is complete. But does Aaron Hernandez have demons in the back of his mind? My final thought, you know, I always give y'all my final thought. And even though Aaron Hernandez had just signed the $40 million contract with the New England Patriots, even though Aaron Hernandez was engaged to a beautiful woman named Shayana Jenkins and they were planning their future, and even though Aaron Hernandez was a brand new father to a sweet, beautiful baby daughter named AVL Hernandez, he was still not happy. In my opinion, I believe that Aaron was carrying several demons on his shoulders. But what were they? It was said that Aaron Hernandez never dealt with the death of his father. It was also said that Aaron Hernandez never dealt with the fact that he was essayed as a child. But why would Aaron Hernandez become so enraged? It was also said that Aaron Hernandez was always paranoid, always thought somebody was watching, always looking over his shoulders and wondering what was going on. In my opinion, Aaron Hernandez was becoming very scared and very worried about what was happening in his future. But did Aaron Hernandez have a mental illness? Did Aaron Hernandez have a sickness? What was going on in Aaron Hernandez's head that he was so paranoid with? Several people said Aaron would become extremely furious and angry very, very quickly. And why is that? In my opinion, Aaron Hernandez had some type of mental illness that he was dealing with, that he was struggling with. It was also said that he was struggling with his sexuality. So if all of these things are coming at Aaron, maybe that's why he was becoming so enraged. And we will discuss that tomorrow on part two of this video.
I hope y'all enjoyed today's video. I hope that you like, subscribe, and comment. And don't forget to press on the notification bell so you never miss a video from me, and marie And as always, stay safe, always be aware of your surroundings, and always know that I love each and every one of y'all. I want to tell y'all that y'all are always welcome to send me a request. And I'm always here if you need. Thank you all for the love and support. I truly appreciate all of you. And for you, I am truly grateful. Stay tuned for tomorrow night as we discuss Aaron Hernandez on Thriller Thursday. I love you all. And remember, kisses.